Good, very good. So the first quick lightning talk, only a few minutes, is about Advent of Code. I am passionate about Advent of Code. Let me tell you a little bit about a story, what Advent of Code is and why I am passionate about it. I came across Advent of Code a little bit more than a year ago. And last year, we did Advent of Code with our kids and the young coders at the Coder Dojo Linz. And uh, we, we tried it and we said, hey, you know what? Let's meet and let's do these Advent of Code code puzzles. puzzles. So what is Advent of Code? Advent of Code is a nice little a puzzle series um, that's happening between the 1st of December and December the 25th. This is why it's called Advent of Code, of course. The coding puzzles are really neatly embedded into stories where you have to help Santa Claus in order to, uh, to save Christmas. The puzzles start relatively simple, but they become harder and harder as the days go by in December. Luckily, last year at least, the, 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 the puzzles was not the hardest ones on December 23rd, 24th, and 25th, because that would be a little bit of a coordination problem. But still, in the middle of December, they were pretty, um, uh, pretty tricky sometimes, and we enjoyed it so much. The puzzles are focused on algorithmic challenges and challenges about data structures and things like that. So if, you, if this is something that you are into, that's definitely interesting for you. Now, Advent of Code is also a speeding contest, a speed coding contest. Every puzzle is published at midnight at Eastern Standard Time, that is UTC minus five. I think that's 6 a.m. in the morning here in Europe. And if you want to get on the leaderboard, on the global leaderboard, you have to get up early and you have to be very fast in order to see your name in, in the leaderboard. Uh, I was blown away when I saw how fast some people code. And if speed coding is something that you are passionate about, definitely try it. The good news is, although, if you are not one of the fastest coders in the world, just to give you an impression, Advent of Code is done by more than 150,000 developers each year. I think last year there were 160,000 on the first day, something like this. So if you are not one of the fastest ones in this area, but you are in a community like our coding club or female coders or your school or your, your community, you can set up private leaderboards and gather stars there. And then you have a private challenge a little bit. And yeah, you are also learning things. I think that it's a great practice, a great possibility to practice a new programming language like Rust because Advent of Code is completely language agnostic. You can start with Rust, continue with Go, go on with C Sharp, move to Python, and even do some things with, I don't know, Wolfram Alpha or Scratch or Excel. It doesn't matter. And of course, Advent of Code is a lot of fun. So let me quickly describe you in just a few minutes how Advent of Code works. This is your goal. This, this picture here is your goal because this is how your Advent of Code event page should look like at the end of the, of the year. Of course, I hope at least we'll get a new ASCII art for this year, but this is the my page from last year. Last year, I earned all 50 stars. Now, at the beginning, you start on a blank slate. So you will not see all the puzzles on December the 1st, but you will only see the puzzle of the 1st of December. And then you can tackle the puzzle of the day. Or if you are curious, you can now also go back in the previous years and take a look at those puzzles and do them as a kind of preparation. If you don't have time on a certain day, you can always go back the, the days that you haven't taken a look at. So that, that's easy. That should be fine. Now, all the puzzles are embedded in a kind of story about Santa Claus. I also mentioned, I already mentioned that. But from a technical perspective, it's super interesting that all the puzzles come with some examples. And in this case, I took a very simple entry level puzzle from, I think it's 2019, where you just have to take a bunch of numbers. You have to divide them by three, round it down, and subtract two to get the result. And here you see uh, in, the, in the yellow rectangle, you see the examples that I meant with the solutions. 
So what you can do on each day, you can take these examples and do test-driven development. So you can write the unit tests first and then write the algorithm. So let me quickly show you how that could look like in an example that I have done. Here you see, whoops, sorry, I forgot to start my zoom, zooming tool, now it should work. Here you see this beautiful function. This is the difficult function that I had to write. And then you can use, for instance, unit testing. This is how I typically do it. I uh, create a, a test module here in Rust, and then I add the, the samples here in my unit test. So you can really do test-driven development. That works pretty well. And it's also uh, nice for people who start coding. Now then, it's getting, it's getting real because you get your personal puzzle input. Advent of Code does not have a single input, a real-world input for everybody, but you get your personal input. You download it, and it looks something like, for instance, this one here. Uh, the puzzle input is always kind of uh, a text input. So here you can practice things like um, file handling. You have to read the file. You can practice things like regular expressions. For instance, working with matches or capture groups. If you don't know what capture groups is, Advert of Code is a great way to find out. Splitting strings into spans, doing some alloc-free algorithms with Rust. That's a lot of fun. The, the advent of code guys say you shouldn't download the input via HTTP requests and do that pretty frequently because, that's, because that uh, might uh, put a stress on the server. So you are encouraged to download the file by copy and pasting it, putting it into a local file, and then do all the development locally. If you really download the, uh, the demo data via HTTP automatically, please do some caching in any way to not... Uh, overstress the servers. Now, then you have to go on and process this input properly. And nearly every time, it is about a kind of iterator or generator. So this is a great thing. If you are new to Rust, you can practice iterators, building custom iterators. For instance, recently, I took a look at one of the, 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 the examples last year, and I wanted to find out what about this yield macro. If you have never seen it, Google it. I was looking for a kind of yield operator in Rust. There is no yield operator in Rust yet. You probably know that, but there are crates about it. And I used an advert of code puzzle to dive into that matter because I simply wanted to play with it. And advent of code is a great place to learn about iterators and generators. And then at the end, you come up with an answer. It's typically a number or a text. You type it in and hopefully you get, you'll get your first star. But that's not all. You're not done yet, because then the second puzzle appears. Every day consists of two puzzles. You have to earn a second star. So you get a slightly more difficult version of the original puzzle. And that is a great possibility to go back to change your unit tests or add new unit tests. You go back into coding. And especially important, you practice refactoring. You have an existing algorithm, and now you have to change it, to generalize it, to introduce abstractions, so you can use common code for both problems and make the different things really different. So I personally think, think this is a great way of learning and practicing refactoring in a language that you know or that you are currently learning, and that will lead you to, hopefully, two stars. And that is the goal of every day, and at the end, and on December the 25th, you hopefully have 50 stars. Let me tell you a few tips that I have learned, <laughs> some of them the hard way, uh, last year, for instance. Um, think about what you want to get out of uh, Edward of Code. Uh, maybe you are into speed coding. If you are into speed coding, don't forget your alarm clock. You have to get up early. And quick and dirty coding is perfectly fine. Maybe, maybe if you really want to go into speed coding, you shouldn't take a new language. You should take a language that you really know, really very know very good, and you try to get up, um, get the, the correct result as fast as possible. 
But you can also ha have a different mindset. You can say, I want to practice a new language. And then maybe you focus more on quality and idiomatic coding, but don't underestimate the additional effort if you try to do it with a different language that you don't already know, because at a certain point in, in, in December, the challenges will be rather tricky. So maybe you want to mix things and go back to the new programming language a few days later when there is time. It is a good idea to join a group because otherwise you try to do it, but you never find the time. If you have a fixed appointment in a group, that's way easier to do because then you know every day you meet and you have fun and maybe have a pizza or whatever and try to solve the puzzle together. Uh, yeah, and of course, uh, maybe you, you use the old versions to come up with a kind of project or workspace structure. Think about how you want to structure your work with the unit tests and so on. So you do not need to build it on December the 1st, or you use the first uh, puzzles, which are pretty simple on the first few days to get into Advent of Code. Speaking of... Um, Ah, yeah, the last one, sorry. <laughs> if you really want to have 50 stars on the December 25th, Hey, prepare your family early that you are going to spend some time in front of the computer on December the 24th and the 25th, because maybe it's good to give them a head, heads up if you are planning to do that one, okay? Speaking about communities, what are we going to do with Advent of Code and communities in Linz? Uh, we are going to do again Advent of Code with the kids and the young coders at Advent of Code uh, at, at the Coder Dojo Linz. We will meet daily and solve the puzzles together. Um, and uh, last year, by the way, two young coders who are just in school, one of them were, was, was 13 year old, managed to get 50 stars on December 25th. So they really made the challenge. That was great. If you are interested, if you want to help us, if you want to be a mentor for young coders, maybe with Russ, that's perfectly fine. Get in touch with me. We would be very happy to greet you. And now I would like to bring up our friend Fred from a Vienna Rust meetup. Hi, Fred. Can you hear us? Yes. Hi, Heiner. Thank you awesome. for having me. Awesome. Fred contacted me and he asked me whether he can share a meetup that they will do in Vienna uh, in relation to Advent of Code. And I immediately um, invited Fred to come to us today at the end of this lightning talk. And maybe you can tell us a little bit what you are going to do in terms of Advent of Code and Rust in December 2021. All right, so um, thank you again for having me. And the first thing uh, I want to talk about is what is mob programming? Uh, because this um, advent of the rustic, rustic mob is about mainly mob programming. Um, so mob programming is an approach to software development where um, the team gets together to work on a task for the project um, at the same time and in the same place. Um, so the advantages of that is that it improves team collaboration and knowledge sharing, and it also kind of reduces distractions and interruptions. Uh, so how it works is that uh, each person in the group gets their turn, their turn uh, to either be uh, at the keyboard, this is called the driver, uh, to be the instructor who instructs the driver on what to do, this is called the navigator, um, or follow along and support the navigator when needed. This is called being a member of the mob or a mobber. Um, so each person spends a few minutes uh, in, the, in the role and this sequence rotates through the group until the task is done. Uh, so nowadays, due to isolation and COVID and so on, uh, mob programming is primarily done via Zoom, screen sharing, and online IDEs. So um, I want to talk a bit about the mob programming on open source software meetup group. Uh, so this is a meetup group uh, with about 200 plus members now. Um, and the main focus of the group is to uh, bring people together to do mob programming on open source software, like maybe fixing a bug or adding a new feature. Um, each session is about uh, three hours long and usually concludes with a pull request to the open source project. Um, these happen quite often, usually on a week, once a week or so on Wednesdays. Um, and then what about the advent of the Rustic Mob event? Uh, so that event is also a meetup event as part of the Mob Programming on Open Source Software meetup group. Um, so this event is, is organized by Harald Kushig and I, and it is about working on the advent of code problems using Rust and in a mob programming setting. 
Um, we think that it will be a really good way to learn about more programming. And if you want to learn Rust, then to learn Rust um, and to also improve uh, problem solving skills. Uh, that being said, you don't have to be new to any of these three things to join. Um, but also, if you are new and if you are a beginning, you're very welcome to join. So our first event will be this coming Wednesday, the 1st of December. Uh, we will start, obviously, with the first problems from Advent of Code. So if you're interested, please join us. We welcome everybody. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you, Fred. Thank you very, very much. So if you, uh, if you want to do Advent of Code, uh, but you are tired of coding alone, that I think is a great opportunity. Now you have an opportunity to work on it for kids and with kids in the Coder Dojo. And if you are a professional developer and you want to get in touch with other professional developers learning Rust or who are passionate about Rust, then the, mar uh, then the meetup that um, Fred just told us about is a great, play a great way to do that. Um, for all who are interested, but you don't find it on the internet, I will post my slide. That's slides that I have shown you now here uh, in the um, in the YouTube chat in a second. And there we have a link to the meetup of Fred. So you you do not need to start googling immediately. You will find the link uh, in the in the YouTube chat. And of course, I will also paste the link in the Discord server. Fred, thank you very much for visiting us and we wish you uh, a nice December and uh, a lot of fun with the advent of code puzzles. Thank you very much, Heine. The same to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.